Obsidian Canvas is a powerful diagramming tool in its own right. But when you consider the fact that it's actually built into Obsidian and the cards can be notes from your Obsidian Vault, it's pretty incredible. But it doesn't give you many options when it comes to controlling how your diagrams look. And that's the problem that Canvas Candy, an Obsidian add-on that gives you a bunch of new ways to change the appearance of your cards in Obsidian Canvas, looks to solve. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a visual tour of what Canvas Candy can do, walk you through setting it up, and share some tips for taking your diagrams in Obsidian Canvas to the next level. So what exactly is Canvas Candy? Well, it's actually a little bit tricky to try and explain because it's not an app, it's not a theme, and it's not a plugin. It's basically a toolkit for Obsidian Canvas that once installed, allows you to change the appearance of your cards in Obsidian Canvas by applying one of the new CSS classes to the card metadata. It does this via a custom CSS snippet which can be a little bit tricky to install, so let's take a look at how to do that quick. Now when you purchase Canvas Candy, you'll get an Obsidian Vault. Click the Open Vault button in the ribbon, and then select the folder location where you put the Canvas Candy Vault. The vault will open and you can browse the notes in the vault for a complete tutorial on how to use all the different features of Canvas Candy. But to add it to your own vault, you'll need to copy the CSS snippet from the Canvas Candy Vault and add it to yours. So click the gear icon to go to the Obsidian settings in the Canvas Candy Vault, then click on Appearance, and scroll down until you see the CSS Snippets section. Click the folder icon to open a hidden folder in your system's file explorer, and then copy the CSS file that you see there. Now you can switch back to your vault and again click the gear icon to go to the settings, then click on Appearance and scroll down to the CSS Snippets section. Click the folder icon to open the hidden folder for your vault, and then paste the Canvas Candy CSS file there. You can rename the file if you want, and whatever file name you choose will be displayed in the CSS snippet section inside your Obsidian appearance settings. Now once you have it set, you can close the system file explorer and then click the refresh button by the CSS snippet section. Your CSS snippet will be added and you'll just need to make sure that it's toggled on in order to start using it. Now once you have Canvas Candy installed, you can use it by adding metadata to cards that you add to your Obsidian Canvas. Let me show you how to do that. Here's Obsidian Canvas, and you can add a new card by simply dragging the card icon from the toolbar into the canvas and releasing the mouse button. Now, if we just type text in the card body, it looks normal. We can resize the card, we can even change the color, but by default, it's going to be this rounded rectangle shape that you see here. But if we add metadata to the top of the card by using three dashes, we can now apply the CSS classes that Canvas Candy has added to manipulate how the card looks on our Obsidian Canvas. So let's use the metadata type CSS classes followed by a colon, and then apply one of the Canvas Candy classes by typing, for example, cc-border-double, which when we click outside the card now, renders a double border around the card. Now you can add multiple CSS classes by using a comma and a space. So let's go back and let's add another class that will center the text by typing cc-card-center but there's a lot more that you can do with this. So let me give you a few examples of how you might want to use Canvas Candy in Obsidian. First, let's construct a simple mockup for a web page we're designing. Let's drag a card up to the top of the canvas, call it Menu, and resize it so it's the width of our Obsidian window. Now for these mockup diagrams, I really like the dashed border. So let's go to the card, go to the top, and add the metadata section, and then add the CSS class cc-border-dashed. This gives us a nice dashed border for that section, which looks like this. All right, now let's add another section by dragging in another card, and we'll make this one orange, call it hero image, and add the cc-border-dashed class. Now, because we want only the border to be visible, we'll also add a class here called cc-card-transparent, which will remove that light orange background from the card as well. All right, so here's what it looks like. Now let's add another section below this, by dragging in another card. We'll resize it, make it green, and we'll call this web copy. Again, let's add CSS classes for cc-border-dashed and cc-card-transparent. And as you can see, now we've got the beginnings of a good looking web page mockup inside of Obsidian Canvas. Canvas Candy is also great for constructing visuals like Venn diagrams. Let me give you an example by recreating the Ikigai Venn diagram. Just drag in a card, Add the CSS class cc-shape-circle, select a color, and resize it to where you want it to be. 
Now for event diagram, the border is going to get in the way. So let's go back and add another CSS class of cc-border-none. This looks a lot more usable. So let's copy this circle, paste the copy, move it into position and change the color. Now you can see that the green circle is on top of the red one. So we actually need to go back and add another CSS class of cc-card-opaque. Now this looks better. So let's go add it to the red circle too. All right, now let's copy that circle again, add another yellow one to the right here, and do it one more time and add a blue one to the left. Okay, so now we have the bones of our Ikigai Venn diagram, but we can't put text in the circles themselves because it's gonna get real messy. So we need to create additional cards for the text labels that are transparent and place them over the sections in the diagram where we want them to appear. So let's add a new card, add the CSS class cc-card-transparent and put the text what you love. Now that looks better, but there's still a border around the card. So let's go back and add another CSS class for cc-border-none. Now we can drag that into the right spot on top of the appropriate circle. Now let me jump ahead here after adding the other labels and we'll add the final text block in the middle of our Venn diagram, but we'll make it bolder by making it a third level header. Now let's drag that into position, fix the spacing on this bottom circle, and here's our final Ikigai Venn diagram. You can also use Canvas Candy to make some pretty cool timelines in Obsidian Canvas using the parallelogram shape. To start, drag a card into your Obsidian Canvas and add a CSS class of cc-shape-parallelogram-right. As you can see, that changes the shape of our card. Now let's change the color to gray, and let's also add a gradient by adding another CSS class of cc-card-gradient-135deg. Now our card has a nice gradient applied to it, which can serve as the basis of our timeline. So now let's add a date to this card of January 24th, 1984, and let's resize it so it fits a little bit better. Okay, now we need to add information above this using another card. So let's drag another card onto our Obsidian Canvas, and we'll add a couple of CSS classes here. CC-border-left, we'll add the bar that we've attached to the shape we just created, and CC-card-transparent, we'll make sure that the text will appear on top of the shape in the background. Next, CC-card-center, make sure that the text is centered in the card. Okay, so here's our card. Now we can just drag this into position, resize it, and we have a nice looking data point to go along with our timeline event. Okay, let's add another one by copying and pasting our shape. And we'll change the date to May 6th, 1988. We'll add an arrow connecting the shapes. And then resize and copy the card with the description then change that text to Apple launches the iMac. So you get the idea here. I can continue to build out my timeline like this by simply copying and pasting the cards for the appropriate events. Now, in addition to the CSS classes, Canvas Candy also gives you custom CSS for callout types. And these allow you to do things like add headers or footers to cards by using callout types in the contents of the cards themselves. Here's an example. Let's say we want to make a Canvas Candy diagram outlining the welcome sequence for people who join our email list. So we'll start the same way as before by adding a card, but this time we don't actually need to add a metadata section and a CSS class. We just need to add a callout by using the greater than character, a space, and then a left bracket, exclamation point, and the name of the callout class that we want to use. Let's use cc-header-no border and then add the callout title. Below that, we can add the regular text to the card and describe the first email someone will receive when they join our email list. And now when we render it, you can see the callout is displayed as a header at the top of the card and the text is below it. Since this email sequence is about obsidian, let's change the color of the card to purple and then copy and paste another card onto our obsidian canvas to the right. We'll draw an arrow connecting the second card to the first one and let's change the callout and contents of this card to reflect the second email that we're going to send when someone joins our list. And let's create one more card here. Connect it with an arrow. 
and again, change the callout and the contents of this card to reflect now the third email in our welcome sequence. And now we've got a very clean looking diagram which outlines the flow of the content that we want to send people who will join our email list. Let's look at one more example and create a simple process diagram. Now much like the welcome sequence, previously we want to drag cards into our Obsidian Canvas and connect them. But this time we're going to change the shapes. So let's drag a card onto our canvas and apply the CSS classes of cc-shape-circle and cc-card-center, then add the text step one. Okay, so here's our circle. Let's resize it. Let's place it over here on the left side of our canvas. And now let's create another card, add the class cc-card-center, and add the text step two. Then let's resize it. Add some color. And connect it to the circle for step one. Now let's change this square into a diamond, but we don't actually do that by adding a specific shape class. Instead, we're going to rotate this shape by adding the CSS class cc-rotate-card-45, which gives us our diamond shape, but does unfortunately cover up the pointy end of our arrow. Now let's add one more card, use the CSS class cc-card-center, and call this step three. We'll resize this into a square, and then again connect it with an arrow. But if we don't want to use the arrow option since we can't see it in the previous step anyway, we can click on the connection and just select the non-directional option. Now we've got the beginnings of a very simple, clear and colorful process being documented in Obsidian Canvas. Now the one downside to Canvas Candy is that you have to manually type the name of the CSS class that you want to use in order to change the appearance of the cards. Now, after you've used it for a while, you might have no trouble remembering these, but they can be a bit confusing at the beginning. So what I did to help me remember them is to make a couple of text expander snippets that I can use to trigger a pop-up where I can just select the class that I want from a drop-down menu. This way, I only have to remember a couple of keyboard shortcuts for the class categories that I created in text expander, like border, callout, card, shape, or rotate. So for example, I can use a text expander snippet like xcard then choose cc-card-fill from the drop-down menu, choose the color, and fill the card and turn it green. Now, by the way, if you want to download my text expander snippet groups for yourself, I've included the link in the description below this video. Now, if you want to customize the look of some of the Canvas Candy classes, you can do so without hacking the actual CSS file by installing the Style Settings Community Plugin. This adds some additional configuration options for certain plugins or community themes, and Canvas Candy supports using this plugin to adjust things like label widths and gradient opacity. Just go to the Obsidian Settings, click on the Style Settings, click on Canvas Candy, and adjust any of the values that you see listed here. So that's Canvas Candy in a nutshell, but it certainly doesn't cover everything that you can do with this phenomenal Obsidian add-on. Now, if you like Obsidian Canvas, but you wish it gave you a little bit more in terms of styling and options, you should definitely check out Canvas Candy. It turns Obsidian Canvas into a powerful diagramming tool like Miro or OmniGraffle, while also giving you the ability to add and link cards to notes in your Obsidian Vault. It's a phenomenal tool for helping you think better and more strategically in Obsidian, and enables you to make some really cool visuals inside Obsidian's Infinite Canvas. It's $20, and full disclosure, I was provided a preview copy but I would have no hesitation paying full price for this. It's really good, and it adds several more tools into your Obsidian Visual Thinking Toolbox. Now remember, if you want to download my Text Expander snippet groups that I mentioned earlier, I've made them available publicly, and there's a link in the description below this video. There's also a link to download my free Obsidian University Starter Vault, which you can download at obsidianuniversity.com vault. The Obsidian University Starter Vault includes a bunch of templates, tips, and additional goodies like a markdown reference guide, a callout reference guide, some Obsidian related shortcuts, and more resources to help you make more of your notes and ideas in Obsidian. Once again, you can download that starter vault for free by going to obsidianuniversity.com vault.